Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 23, I'm going to present questions from a variety of different topics and we are going to cover 20 questions on many different Azure concepts. And please note that we have already covered 420 questions covering the length and breadth of AZ900 exam and more questions are added very frequently. And friends, in all these videos, you will find tons of Azure concepts, Microsoft documentation, exam tips, and also free PDF file with all the questions and the answers to help you study in offline mode. And links to all the previous parts are available in the description box and in the i button on the top right corner. So please make sure to watch all of them and subscribe to the channel. Now let's directly jump and prepare for AZ900 exam. So let's begin part 23 with question number 421. The question says that this question requires that you evaluate the underlying text to determine if it's correct. This is the underlying text. Let's read the entire statement. It says that you have an application that is comprised of an Azure web app that has a SLA of 99.95% and then you also have Azure SQL database that has an SLA of 99.99%. Now the question tells you that the composite SLA for the application is the product of both SLAs which is equal to 99.94%. So friends, you have to review this underlying text and if it makes the statement correct, then you have to select no change needed, which is the very first option here. Otherwise, you have to select from the other three options given. Let's read the other three option. The option B is the lowest SLA associated to the application, which is 99.95%. Option C says the highest SLA associated to the application, which is 99.99%. And lastly, option D says the difference between the two SLAs, which is 0.05%. And the correct answer for this question is option A, no change needed. So 99.94% is the correct SLA. And how we have calculated this? This is the composite SLA, which is the product of both the SLAs, which is 99.95% which is the SLA of Azure Web App and also the SLA of 99.99% which is the SLA of Azure SQL Database. And in case you are still confused, let's check out the Microsoft official documentation to understand how these composite SLAs are calculated. So here is the documentation or Q&A question and answer from Microsoft. Here you can see that we are talking about composite SLA. Let's come down and in this section, you can see that Microsoft, an employee of Microsoft has given an example. The example is exactly the same that we presented in the question as well. Here you can see that we are given with app service web apps that has an SLA of 99.95% and then we have SQL database with a SLA of 99.99%. Further, you can see that composite SLA, how it is calculated. Well, composite SLA for this application is 99.95% multiplied by 99.99%, which is equal to 99.94%. So anytime, my friends, you have to calculate the composite SLA of an application, then as a first step, you have to figure out the individual SLA of all the services in that application. And once you have the individual SLA, all you need to do is multiply all these SLAs and then you have your own composite SLA for the entire application. So calculating composite SLA is very simple, a simple multiplication and then you have composite SLAs. I'm pretty sure that you got the concept of composite SLA. This is not just important from the exam perspective, but also whenever you're working in Microsoft Azure or any other cloud service. So here comes question number 422. It says to complete the sentence, select the appropriate option in the answer area. Here you can see this sentence. It says data that is stored in archive access tier of an Azure storage account, fill in the blanks and you have to fill this blank with any of these options. What are the options? Option A says can be accessed at any time by using azcopy.exe. Then we have can be only read by using Azure backup. Option C is must be restored before the data can be accessed. And lastly, we are given with must be rehydrated before the data can be accessed. And the correct answer for this question is option D must be rehydrated before the data can be accessed. And this is because Azure storage offers different kind of access tiers. The first one is hot 
then we have cool and lastly we have archive tier and here in this question we are talking about archive tier so archive access tier has the lowest storage cost but it has higher data retrieval cost compared to the hot and cool tiers data in the archive tiers can take several hours to retrieve also please note that while a blob is in archive storage the blob data is offline and cannot be read overwritten or modified to read or download a blob in archive you must first rehydrate it to an online tier so you can see according to this documentation data in the archive access tier must always be rehydrated why so because data in archive tier is offline and you cannot read overwrite or modify that data unless you rehydrate the same now let's look at question number 423 it says that when you need to delegate permissions to several azure virtual machines simultaneously you must deploy azure virtual machines to which of the following your options are azure region azure availability zones azure resource group and lastly we have azure resource manager template and the correct answer for this question is option c azure resource group Question number 424, it says Azure has a built-in authentication and authorization services that provides secure access to Azure resources. Yes or no? And most surely this is a correct statement. That's why we have chosen yes for this question. Question number 425 says that Azure Active Directory or Azure AD provides authentication services for resources hosted in Azure and Microsoft 365. Yes or no? And most surely this is a correct statement. And friends, we have talked a lot about authorization, authentication, Azure AD and RBAC services in the previous parts. So please do watch the previous parts in order to understand these critical Azure services. Needless to say, you're gonna get a lot of questions around these services. So I'm sure you will watch the previous parts. And here comes question number 426. It says that identities stored in Azure Active Directory third-party cloud services and on-premises Active Directory can be used to access Azure resources. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. And now we have question number 427. Azure Active Directory requires the implementation of domain controllers on Azure virtual machines. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. That's why no is the correct answer. Now, I am pretty sure that many of you, as you are just starting with Microsoft Azure, would not be knowing about this service, which is called Domain Controllers. So just to give you a kickstart on Azure Active Directory Domain Services or also called Azure AD DS. And here you can read. Let me zoom it a little so that you can read a little better. Oops, that was too much. So this is what the documentation says that Azure Active Directory Domain Services part of Microsoft Entra, which is very latest entry in Microsoft services. And we have discussed these services and the questions related on this one in the previous parts as well. So this enables you to use managed domain services such as Windows Domain Join, Group Policy, LDAP, and Carbros Authentication without having to deploy, manage, or patch domain controllers. And friends, for your self-study, I have provided the link for this documentation in the description box. In fact, all the documentation that I have referred so far or will be referring in the future slides is available in the description box. But in case you want to understand why this is answered as no, then you have to join the next part in which I will explain why Azure Active Directory does not require implementation of domain controllers on the Azure virtual machines. So please do join us in the next part. Subscribe to the channel so that you get the timely notifications. And with the belief that you have subscribed to the channel, let's move to the next question. Question number 428. It says each user account in Azure Active Directory can be assigned only one license. Yes or no? Correct answer is no. And coming up quickly, question number 429, it says identities stored in an on-premises Active Directory can be synchronized to Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. Now let's move on and take one more question on authorization. Question number 430, it says authorization to access Azure resources can be provided only to Azure Active Directory users. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. And this is because there are many more ways to provide authorization to access Azure resources 
other than the Azure Active Directory. Coming up next is question number 431. It says that you can view your company's regulatory compliance report from your options are Azure Advisor, Azure Analysis Service, and then we have Azure Monitor. Lastly, we are given with Azure Security Center. The correct answer for this question is option D, Azure Security Center. And this is because the advanced monitoring capabilities in Azure Security Center lets you track and manage compliance and governance over the time. And the overall compliance provides you with a measure of how much your subscription are compliant with the policies associated with your workload. So that's why Azure Security Center is the place in in case you want to view the company's regulatory compliance report. And here we have question number 432. It says Azure AD is responsible for authorization. Yes or no? And the answer is no. Always remember my friends that Azure AD is responsible for authentication. On the other hand, RBAC is responsible for authorization. And then we have question number 433. It says that you have a resource group named RG1 and you plan to create virtual networks and app services in RG1. You need to prevent the creation of virtual machines in RG1. The solution must ensure that the other objects can be created in RG1. What should you use? Your options are a lock, an Azure role, a tag and lastly we have an Azure policy. But before I answer the question, I hope you understood the question. See, the question is very simply asking that you have a business need where you have a resource group called RG1 and you want to make sure that all the resources or the services can be created in RG1, but the virtual machines cannot be created in RG1. So you have to create some kind of dependency or some kind of rule or some kind of policy that will ensure that virtual machines are not enabled or created in RG1. And the only service that can help you in this business scenario is option D and Azure policy. And this is because an Azure policy is a service in Azure that you can use to create, assign and manage policies. And these policies can enforce different rules and effect over your resources so that those resources stay compliant with your corporate standards and service level agreements. And friends, trust me, you're gonna get a lot of questions on Azure policy in the AZ-900 exam. So please cover this topic thoroughly. And for more such questions on Azure policy, please also watch our previous parts and the upcoming parts. And now comes question number 434. It says that this question requires you that you evaluate the underlying text to determine if it's correct. The statement says that after you create a virtual machine, you need to modify the network security group to allow connections to the TCP port 8080 on the virtual machine. Now you have to review this underlying text and if this text makes the entire statement correct, in that case you have to choose no change needed. Otherwise you have to choose the other three options and the option B is virtual network gateway, option C is virtual network and lastly we are given with the route tables. But for now, the correct answer is option A, no change needed. Why so? Because when you create a virtual machine, the default setting is to create NSG or network security group attached to the network interface assigned to a virtual machine. A NSG works like a firewall and you can attach network security group to a virtual network or an individual subnets within the virtual network. And furthermore, you can also attach NSG to a network interface assigned to a virtual machine. And friends, before we move ahead, I have two, three requests to make very quickly. Whenever you are emailing us with the answers to any of these episodes, please always mention the episode number or the part number. This really helps us to quickly send you the PDF files containing all the questions and the answers for that particular part. Otherwise, it takes a bit more time and personally, I do not like you waiting because you are preparing for certification and getting this PDF file on time can really boost up your learning in the offline mode. And also my friends, please do subscribe to the channel as we have compiled lot of new questions very close to the questions that are being asked lately in the EZ-900 exam. And now quickly we have question number 435. It says Azure Germany can be used by the legal residents of Germany only. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And the reason is that Azure Germany is available to the eligible customers and the partners globally who intend to do business with EU 
EFTA including United Kingdoms and just to revise once again my friends there are three types of question that you will get in AZ 900 exam related to the locations the first one is Azure government whenever it's Azure government it's always the US government secondly we have azure china so azure china is not operated by microsoft individually it is actually with the collaboration with 21 via net and then we have azure germany that question you're already seeing on your screen and as you might have already guessed we have covered a lot of location based questions in all the previous parts Coming up next is question number 436. It says, what can Azure Information Protection encrypt? Your options are network traffic. The second option is documents and email messages. Thirdly, we have an Azure storage account. And lastly, we have Azure SQL database. And the correct answer for this question is option B documents and email messages and in case you do not know azure information protection is a cloud-based solution that helps an organization to classify and optionally protect its document and emails by applying labels so azure information protection can encrypt document and emails and here comes question number 437 once again this underlined text kind of question let's read this statement it says that you have an azure virtual network named vnet1 in a resource group named rg1 now you assign an azure policy specifying that the virtual networks are not an allowed resource type in rg1 so virtual network one is deleted automatically so same instructions once again you have to review this underlined text and if it makes the statement correct then you have to choose the no change needed otherwise you have to choose from the other three options which are is moved automatically to another resource group option c says continues to function normally and option d says is now a read only object and the correct answer to this question is option c continues to function normally so let me give you a surprise question any one of you who answers the question correctly will get the pdf file containing all the questions and the answers for all 440 questions including this part 23 so you have to tell me why azure virtual network vnet1 will still continue to function even if we have a policy that says virtual networks are not an allowed resource type in rg1 why this happens if you tell me the correct answer you will get the pdf file with all the 440 questions send me your answers to our email id connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com and with that let's move on to the next question 438 it says azure firewall will encrypt all the network traffic sent from azure to the internet yes or no and the correct answer is no and this is because azure firewall does not encrypt network traffic it is actually used to block and allow traffic based on source or destination ip address and source or destination ports and the protocol but definitely not to encrypt network traffic and here comes question number 439 it says azure virtual machine that runs on windows server 2016 can encrypt network traffic sent to the internet yes or no and the correct answer is no and friends there is a huge debate on this question whether it's a yes or a no so i have researched on this question and i will present my justification in the next part 24 and now comes question number 440 it says a network security group or nsg will encrypt all the network traffic sent from azure to the internet yes or no and the correct answer is no and here comes question number 440 it says network security group is an extension of application security group used to manage networking component of the application yes or no and the correct answer is no because we all know that network security group are not part or extension of application security group that's why no is the correct answer so that's all my friends if you gained some value from this video please like the video as it helps us to grow and keep the content free and if you have joined the tech blackboard family for the first time please do subscribe to the channel and also select that all option to get the timely notification of all our upcoming videos and friends sharing is caring so please help your friends share our videos on your linkedin profile whatsapp facebook instagram or any other social media platform of your choice our social media platform handles are flashing on your screen and i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning 
your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and i look forward for them we will meet again in our next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching